Okay, let's get started. <laughs> this is the Finding and Monitoring Online Conversations webinar. I'm Faiza Almastehi, Project Manager and Social Media Strategist at Shippel, the web marketing company in Houston, Texas. And we are going to talk about finding and monitoring online conversations today in our webinar. All right, so let's start. All right, so online conversations are happening every day all over the internet, whether you're aware of it or not. Specifically, people are out there talking about you, your competitors, your brand, and your industry. They're creating brand new content about you, about your competitors, about your brand, about your industry, but all without your permission or consent. And without your participation, it's sort of like a one-sided conversation about you with absolutely zero input from your side of the conversation. Can you believe this is happening? Well, believe it. It's happening and you cannot stop it. But what you can do is learn how to understand what's going on, learn how to find those conversations, learn how to keep track of and monitor those conversations, and eventually you can and should participate in those conversations. Learning to do these things will help you learn to control and manage what's being said about you, your company, and your brand. You are not as helpless as you think you are. So, to me, this webinar represents the underpinnings of any good social media marketing plan. Understanding where your audience is online and knowing what they're saying is half the battle. Actually, it's probably more like three-fourths of the battle. Before you go out and start blogging or tweeting or putting content up on YouTube on behalf of your company or organization, it's crucial to know what audiences are looking for when it comes to creating content in the social web. So in this presentation, we're going to talk about a few different types of tools to help you find and monitor online conversations. First, we're going to talk about email alerts like Google Alerts and TweetBeep. Next, we're going to talk about specialized social web search engines like blog searches and social web searches in general. And then we're going to finish by talking about RSS, what it is, and how to put all these searches together and make it easier for you to monitor the conversations via Google Reader. So let's move on to Google Alerts. Now everybody let me know if you can see this. There might be a little bit of a delay, but I want to make sure that everyone can see before we start talking about Google Alerts because Google Alerts is sort of like a cornerstone in most people's online monitoring um, conversation. Okay, awesome. So we'll jump right in talking about Google Alerts. So what Google Alerts are, they're basically email updates of the latest relevant Google results, web, news, um, well, news on the web, anything on the web. It's based on your choice of query or topic. So getting a Google Alert is the same as doing a Google search, except with a Google Alert, you're getting Google to do all the work for you and then send it to your inbox wrapped in a nice little email. It's really convenient so that you don't have to go every single day to Google and search for your search term. So in this webinar, I'm going to use Shipple as an example company or organization, but you'll want to start thinking about what sorts of search terms you may want to look for. You may want to look for different competitors. You, want, you may want to look for um, your industry in general. You may want to create um, you know, quite a few Google Alerts. Just keep in mind you're going to be getting emails, so you need to make sure that you can keep up with them, so don't create too many. But um, just start thinking about what sorts of things you'd like to see on a daily, weekly, as it happens basis via Google Alerts. So this is a Google Alerts screen. Very easy. Google.com slash alerts. There's really nothing to it. You can either have a Google account and sign in to manage your alerts, or you can simply create a Google alert, enter your email address, and you'll have a, an alert created for you. What I recommend, because it's probably something you'll be doing for a professional rather than personal basis, you probably want to create a Google account um, to monitor and manage your alerts. So what I'm going to do here is sign in to manage my alerts. And if you don't have a Google account, no worries, because it will take you to this page and it will say create a Google account now. Creating a Google account is free if you don't already have one. So I'm just going to sign in right here. I'll sign in. Okay, so we're looking at the Manage My Alerts screen on Google Alerts. I don't have any Google Alerts because Google so kindly tells me, so I'm going to create one. 
here it is. Um, this is this is really all you get. Your search terms. I'm going to add Shipple as my search term. Then you get to choose the type, and the type means what the search, where the search will be conducted. The search can be on news, blogs, web, comprehensive search of everything, video, and groups. So I want to do a comprehensive search of everything that Google has. It will be delivered to my email, but I can have it as a, as a feed, which we'll talk about later. So we'll do email. How often? I want it to happen once a week so I don't get overloaded with email. And then I create my alert. Easy. Let's say I want to create another alert. Cool. New alert over here, this button. Click new button, new alert. Let's say I want to say web marketing. So I put that in quotations because I want it to keep it together as one phrase. And so I'll search web marketing. I'm going to search comprehensive. I'm going to have it delivered to my email. And I want it once a day because I really, really love web marketing. I want to stay on top of the topic. I'm going to create my alert. So here is where you sort of see the benefit of having a Google account and signing in because you've got this dashboard with your Google alerts that you set up and it's very easy to manage them. So let's say for Shipple, I want to change the um, frequency, for example. I'm going to hit edit over there. It's going to open this area up for me and I'm going to change it from once a week to as it happens. So every time someone mentions Shipple, I'll get an email. You have the option of as it happens, once a day, or once a week. I'm going to choose as it happens, and I'm going to save. So now you can see this over here on the left-hand side. You have web marketing and you have Shipple. Those look like live links, and the thing is they are. What if I search? I'm going to click on Shipple. And so I see here in the past month from news results, because it says right here, news results, standard version. Over here I'm looking and it says recent, past hour, or sorry, last hour, last day, past week, past month. Past month is selected. So in the past month, there's PRinside.com talking about a release that we had for a particular client. And so that will show me that that's what happened. Now let's see if I want to do, over here I've got archives that I can search. Now Google's going to deliver to you the most recent information that it finds, but all that information is still there. So if I want to look in 2008 for Shipple mentions, there's a whole bunch right there. And that's mostly, you know, talking about Shipple, our company, and then our CEO, Ed Shipple. So I have a lot of options. I can click here and go to recent news results. So don't ignore this sidebar over here. You have a lot of options over here. If you want to choose certain dates, like let's say you knew that something was happening. This search 1980 to 2009. That's crazy. Let's search other dates. I can search and it goes by year. So I can search from 2000 through 2009. <laughs> And I can see everything here that's been going on in the news, just the news, for 2000 to 2009. All right. So now we've talked a little bit about Google Alerts. We'll go back a little bit. We'll go back to our alerts. Okay, so we're looking at manage our alerts. You can have as many alerts here as you'd like. Um, just depends on how many you were willing to keep up with. They'll come as a small, like, text-based email with links to the actual content that they're talking about. It will be delivered to your inbox as often as you choose, based on right here where it says how often, once a day, as it happens, or once a week. You can create as many as you can keep up with. We'll leave this open because we're going to come back to this a little bit later. The next sort of um, email alert I want to talk to you about is Twitter alerts, and that's Tweet Beep. And that's Tweet, T-W-E-E-T, -E 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 Beep, B-E-E-P dot com.
You don't have to be on Twitter to use TweetBeep. TweetBeep is like Google Alerts, but for Twitter. Um, you don't have to have an account to monitor what people are saying about you, but if you ever plan to respond or participate in the conversation, you'll probably want to look into that. So it's a free sign up here. So you have a username, a password, you confirm your password, blah, blah, blah. This is what I'm going to do. I have a Twitter account, so I'm going to sign in because I've created an account and it's an easy free sign up right here and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so right now I only have a tweet beep set up for my name and it comes to me daily. It's exactly like a Google alert, um, you, except it's only searching Twitter. So what I have done here is I edit, I can edit and this is what happens when you want to create a new keyword alert. My alert name is me. I can have it every day or every hour. This is the name. It can be from any particular person if there's a particular company or Twitter user that you're monitoring. And then you save the alert. So let's create a new alert. Right here I would click keyword alert. And my alert name let's say is Shipple. I want to receive it every day. My keyword is Shipple. There's no particular phrase. There's no particular person. I can drill it down to talking to finding people within 25 miles from Houston. As you can see, you can have up to 1,000 miles. I'll just pick 25 miles. Um, you can mess with attitudes, positive or negative, or asking a question. But I would say if you're trying to monitor what's being said about your company or organization on Twitter, just leave that alone and save the alert. Now you'll see this operates just like Google Alerts. So if I want to view this just like Google Alerts, I'll just click on View. And it will show me from search.twitter.com everything that I want to see. So it's actually adding my name in here too from myself, from FISA. So it's going to have FISA Shippel near Houston within 25 miles. So this is showing mentions of Shipple or FISA in Twitter. So you can see it's showing you everything. This will come to your inbox as well, depending on whatever term you um, specify. So as you can see, there's a bit going on here on Twitter with Shipple. Operates just like Google Alerts. We're going to leave this up because we're going to talk about this a little bit later. So those are the email alerts, Google Alerts and TweetBeep for Twitter. Now we're going to talk about search engines. One of the first search engines I want to talk to you about is blog search. Now, once again, just like with TweetBeep, um, having a blog isn't necessary for this in order to use this. Um, and having a corporate blog may not be for everyone, but commenting on blogs when they're talking about you, regardless of whether or not you have a blog, is highly recommended. And I'm going to show you two search engines for blogs that I particularly like and rely on. The first one is Blog Pulse, B L O G P U L S E dot com. This is by Nielsen, who I think you'll probably be familiar with. They're the ratings company. Well, they've they've developed this really great blog search engine as well. So it's just a search engine. All it does will search is search blogs, so you can search the blogosphere. I'm going to search for Shipple and hit go. And this is going to show all the mentions on blogs about Shipple. So you'll see there are quite a few. That's great. Sweet. Awesome. You can search for whatever you want to. Let's search for FISA. Awesome. Plenty of stuff here. Okay. So that's one search engine. And we'll come back to this later when we talk about RSS and Google Reader. Next, another search engine that I want you to consider for blog searches is blogsearch.google.com. I'm sure you recognize Google. This is Google's dedicated blog search engine, and it works the same way. So let's search Shipple here. We're searching blogs, or we can search the web. I want to search blogs. Okay. Now you see these results may be different or they may be the same. Now let's go to Shipple instead of FISA and I'll show you. Each search engine has a different 
way of classifying what it wants to show up in its search results. So you may have different, you may have the same, that's why I use two. And I'll show you, I'll talk a little bit more about how you can keep up with these things um, instead of going and searching every single day on Blog Pulse and on Google Blog Search. So see here we have 118 messages found. Here it says we have 11,000. This may seem like a lot more, but it's this is any time. As you can see, there's a little sidebar over there that'll show you what your range is. And over here, I'm not quite sure what the range is. Looks to be very, very recent though. I'm seeing mostly from May. So let's see. We've got 118 here from May. Let's check the past month here. And we've got 43 for the past month. So it really depends. And so I don't like to rely on one search engine, especially if I'm trying to do monitoring for my company. I like to rely on a few and get a variety. So those are the blog search engines I wanted to show you. Next, I'm going to go show you a Twitter search engine. And you did see this a little bit when we were looking at TweetBeep, because what TweetBeep does is it creates a search for you on the Twitter search, just like Google Alerts does, creates a search on Google for the terms that you're searching for. So TweetBeep is connected to Twitter search. Google Alerts is connected to Google search. So here we are. This is just the interface that will search only Twitter. Once again, you don't have to have a Twitter account in order to find out what's going on here on Twitter, but in order to respond to somebody on Twitter, you'll want to have a Twitter account. But that's a lesson for another day. So here we're going to search Shipple, and you'll see our results will be the same as, one, as the ones that we had on TweetBeep. Just like with Google Alerts, if we had actually clicked on the link, which we did, and viewed our search results, from Google Alerts, we would see the results of the search on the Google interface. Just like if we click here and we view, we're going to see the results of the search on the Twitter search interface. There we go. We see that. And here we are. This is the same thing as searching on Twitter. Google Alerts, or sorry, TweetBeep and Twitter search, same thing. Well, what I do want to show you is, so we're searching here on search.twitter.com. You may want to do an advanced search sometimes and drill it down a little more. So over here, next to the search button, we can go to an advanced search, click here. And what's really useful is, especially if you're operating specifically or solely for a local market, you can drill down in the geography. So let's say I've searched for Let's do an example search here. I've done a search for children's museum. Actually, what mistake did I just make there? I'm sure you guys probably saw the mistake that I made. If I'm looking for children's museum, I should have put it in quotations. And I also spelled it wrong. <laughs> Okay, now I've spelled children's right, and I've put it in quotations. Great, so this is every mention on Twitter right now for the Children's Museum. But I'm the Children's Museum in Houston, and I want to see maybe what people are saying about the Children's Museum in Houston. So I want to drill down. So I'm going to click over here on the advanced search, and I'm going to put children's museum all of these words in quotations you could put this exact phrase any of these words none of these words this hashtag I just mess with this first one what I want to do then is go down to places put in Houston I want to scroll down and say 50 miles within Houston or 50 miles outside of Houston um, I want to see anyone who's talking about the children's museum and then I'm going to hit search. It will narrow down the results for me. So if I am a local children's museum and I want to keep track of what people are saying in the Houston area, that's important for me in order to be able to respond to these people if I'm on Twitter or know what's being said about the children's museum in Houston. So, so far so good. This is pretty positive. If I was the children's museum, I would say, this person's saying for some reason I have been to the children's museum but not since having kids. Strange, but fine. 
thinking that the Children's Museum sounds like a good plan for today. Sweet, that was six days ago. Hopefully she went. This one was five days ago. So this is the search on Twitter, and I'm going to leave this up because when we go to talk a little bit more about RSS, you're going to find that this is going to be immensely valuable. So that's how to drill down in a Twitter search. The last thing I want to talk to you about before we talk about Google and Google Reader and RSS is brand monitoring. Now, this is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite social media tools. It's called Social Mention, which is socialmention.com. Um, it searches the social web. Um, everything sort of brands itself these days against Google Alerts. Well, this one says, think Google Alerts, but for social media. You can receive daily email alerts of a developing news story, a competitor, the latest on a celebrity, yourself, whatever you like. So here you can create an alert as well, just like what I was showing you. So you can create an alert here. So you have Google Alerts, you have Tweet Beep Alerts, and you can have Social Mention Alerts. This sounds like a lot of email, right? Well, I'm going to show you in the end how to manage all of this. And this interface looks strangely familiar, just like Google Alerts. You can enter your search phrase. Now this one is different. Social Mention is different. It's searching the social web. So you have the option of searching blogs, microblogs, bookmarks, comments, events, images, news, video, audio, Q&A, and all. That's a lot. I search all, any language, maybe you speak Arabic, maybe shipples in Arabic, I don't know. Your email address and your delivery daily. Create the alert. And it's verifying. I don't use such social mention in an alerts way. I'll show you how I use social mention. First of all, you've got all these tabs across the top. I pick all, I'll search shipple and hit search. It's going to fetch the results for me, just like a puppy. And if it takes a little while, don't fret, it's working. It just is searching a lot of sites and a lot of types of sites, as you saw searching about 10 different types of sites, which anything that falls within any of those domains, it's going to search. So it's going to take a little bit. The only thing that something like social mention does not search is it does not search social networks sometimes. Now, stuff may come up on Facebook if it's public, but let's say you want to know whether or not people are writing on each other's walls about your company or about you. Since that's password protected information and not public, it will not search it. So those things will not come up. Um, that's the same for MySpace, so you won't see those sorts of things. You'll see any information that is public, that's publicly searchable, but if you want to find out whether or not someone's been talking about you or talking smack about you on Facebook walls, you won't be able to find that information out. And that's just the nature of the beast. It's a password protected, more or less private site, so you're not going to find that information. Okay, so this is my search for Shipple. Now this looks a little bit crazy, but it doesn't have to be crazy. Over here it will tell you the strength, and every time you hover over one of these little boxes, it will tell you exactly what strength means. So this one says that strength is the likelihood that your brand is being discussed in social media. This one here says sentiment, and sentiment is the ratio of mentions that are generally positive to those that are generally negative. Passion, measure of, likelihood that of, of the likelihood that individuals talking about your brand will do so repeatedly. And the reach, it's your range of influence. So there's a lot of interesting statistics on this page. We could probably spend an entire webinar talking about social mention. But what I want you to see is right over here. I'll show you the top keywords that are associated with um, with Shipple, which is weird because my name isn't there. Um, the top users mentioning Shipple, the top hashtags on Twitter associated with Shipple, and the sources. And this is a good one for you because it will show you, see there is a little bit here from Facebook, and you can click on Facebook and see what it is showing you from Facebook. This is on somebody's Facebook profile. Must be something. Let's check it out. Okay. 
I think our internet's a bit slow here today, guys. So bear with me. Always seems the internet likes to uh, throw a little bit of a fit when I'm on a webinar. <laughs> Or it could take a nap. That's cool, too. All right, while we're waiting for that to open, let's just go back and take a look at what's going on here. I'm going to go back to the main search. And you'll see the little icons next to the results. There's Twitter icons here, and you'll see there are a lot. This icon looks like backtype.com. I'm not very familiar with backtype.com. Um, but it seems to be the blogging software that perhaps Ed's using. Not, not not very familiar with it at all. Um, you'll see that there are little colored dots next to them too, and that is a level of, that's the sentiment. So the green is positive, there's red if it's negative. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, but if you say never or don't, it will sometimes register as negative with social mention. So let's go down. See here we've got a WordPress icon. That's my blog. Um, not, that one is Ice Rocket, which I'm not very familiar with, but it's a Blogspot blog. I'm trying to show you some negative, with an example of negative. This one's neutral, because um, it's asking a question, so it can't be positive or negative necessarily. Because there's just too much positivity out there about Shipple. Here we go, here's a negative. It says, after I gave him crap for no punctuation in his book club, give away a comment. Now that would, that's ranked as negative, maybe because it mentioned the word crap. That's just the algorithm that social mention has for determining positive or negativity in the social web. So let's see. Now this one, this one was actually searching his status message, I believe, and it's not public. So looks like social mention's making some inroads because the last time I tried to do this Facebook um, status messages weren't displaying. So it looks like you can actually search if someone's talking about your company in their status messages, but not necessarily in their wall posts. So this guy mentioned Shipple in a status message, and that showed up when we go down here and we want to see anything to, that they're talking about us in Facebook here click on Facebook and actually showed up um, in this feed and that's not public information so looks like social mentions making some inroads in social networks because as you can see MySpace does not show up in there I don't know what I did oh, I'm gonna go back so that's just an example of some of the information that you can get from social mention now, you can receive this information, all of this information. You can receive Google alerts. You can receive Tweet Beep alerts. And you can receive social mention alerts. You can get all of those in your inbox if you want to. But you don't have to. And you don't have to go to Google or Twitter search or social mention every time you want to find out what's being said about you. And that's the really exciting thing about the internet and about all of this is that you can have it all in one place and updated for you. And that's what Google Reader is all about. But before we talk about Google Reader, we need to talk about RSS a little bit. So you've probably heard about RSS before. Maybe you know what it is, maybe you don't. RSS stands for Really Simple Syndication. What it is, it's basically a technology that people use to keep track of their favorite websites. So in the old days of the internet, people, um, in order to keep track of information or updates on a website, you had to go and bookmark the website in your browser and manually go back to the pages on a regular basis to see if anything new had been added. Um, that is a real pain in the butt. So what if you could actually tell a website to let you know every time that they have an update. Well, in a sense, that's exactly what RSS does for you. RSS provides you with a method of getting relevant and up-to-date information sent to you for you to read in your own time. It saves you time, saves you energy, saves you effort, and helps you get the information you want quickly after it's published. Many people describe RSS as a news feed that you can subscribe to. 
So it's kind of like subscribing to a magazine that's delivered to you periodically, but instead of it coming to your physical mailbox each month, like when a ma magazine is published, it's delivered to your RSS reader, or what I sometimes call an RSS feed reader, every time your favorite website updates. So it doesn't have to go to your email box and clog it up every time with alerts, and you don't have to go to the website. So I'm going to show you um, what an RSS feed reader is, how to add content to that RSS feed reader, and you're going to be like singing from this, the rooftops after you see this, if you don't already know what this is. So this is Google Reader. It's google.com slash reader. It's probably because most people these days seem to have Google accounts, and because if you're going to be creating Google Alerts, you're going to have a Google account, you probably will find that using Google Reader is the easiest. There are others out there, including um, blog lines. You can also use Outlook as a, as a feed reader, but I would say that the majority of people are using Google Reader because it's easy and you already have some sort of Google account related. Um, so if you have a Google account, you'll want to sign in. So I'm going to sign in right here. And if you don't have one, of course, you can create an account. And again, this address is google.com slash reader. So you're going to go to signing in. Okay, so this is the home screen. It's going to talk to you about getting started with Google Reader, keeping track of what you read, a video tutorial, which you may or may not want to give a listen to or give a look at. Um, it'll help you with the ins and outs of Google Reader. It'll give you, see what are the, all these buttons do, and that's it. So I don't know if you noticed, but over here, all items is highlighted. And when I logged into Google Reader, it showed me that there were four unread. It was bold, and there was a four next to it. As I scrolled past it, it showed that that number went down, and then it eventually went away. So that's pretty great, because it just tells me when there's something new. And when I've read it, it's gone. So how does that pertain to everything we've been doing? Well, RSS feed readers are going to require you to grab the RSS feed from a particular site or search. So we're going to go back to the beginning when we discuss Google Alerts. See our Google Alerts here? We're going to do this. We're going to edit. And instead of having them delivered to email, we're going to get them in a feed. And we're going to save it. So here we go. This is a little bit of a different view here. We can have it delivered to a feed, or we can view it in Google Reader. Let's click View in Google Reader. OK, and we're subscribed. So that's all it took. All we had to do was click on that, and over here it will show our subscriptions. So here's our Google Alerts, that alert that we created in the Google Alert um, interface for web marketing. That's it. Every time there's something new, it will show up here with bold and with the number next to it. So let's do this for something that has, we'll edit this one. We'll put this in a feed, save it, and view it in Google Reader. So what we're doing here is we're subscribing to it, and we're going to look at it in Google Reader. I think it did it. OK, it says I'm not subscribed to this one, so I'm going to subscribe. But there's nothing new yet. So if there's nothing new, I want to view all items. Hmm. That's something's wrong there. Let's check the feed. Hmm. Well, that's not normal. Hold on one second. We're going to go back. Because what I want to do is see this. This is exactly what I want to see. So if Google's misbehaving on you, and what was happening here is it added Google Alerts dash Shipple as the term that I'm searching for. That's not right. So what I'm going to do is click on this, go to the feed settings, and unsubscribe because that's not right. That's how you get rid of a feed. I'm going to highlight this one. That's not right. Go to the feed settings, unsubscribe. Now I'm not subscribed to anything. So what I did here was I clicked on Shipple, my Google Alerts, and over here there's this little RSS feed button. This is 
what I want to see when I'm subscribed to it in my Google Reader. So I'm going to click on RSS. And now it's going to pop up in my Google Reader. And this is exactly what I want, so I'm going to subscribe. So every time someone mentions Shipple in Google News, this is searching Google News only, every time it's searching, uh, um, there's a mention of Shipple in the news on Google News, it's going to update here. So I see this, this is great, it's new because there's one new article um, in this feed. I see it, I read it, I scroll past it, it's done. That's all I need there. So let's go to TweetBeep. TweetBeep also has an RSS option. So we're going to click on RSS. And this is the Twitter search that I did on TweetBeep. So what I want to do is subscribe to it. And every time there's a new mention of the term that I've chosen, and in this particular um, search I chose my name, every time there's a new mention of my name, it's going to show me that there's a new mention of my name. So I don't ever have to perform this search ever again on Twitter search, nor do I have to have that tweet beep come to my inbox if I don't want to, because it's right here in my subscriptions in Google Reader. So I've seen these. I'm going to scroll past it. Cool. I know that they're there. Awesome. Let's go to Blog Pulse. Blog Pulse is the same thing. Here it's called XML or Get Feed for this search. So I've done my search on Blog Pulse for Shipple. I'm going to subscribe to this search in my Google Feed Reader, Google Reader, and I'm never going to have to do that search again. Subscribe. There we go. Ten results. New, I've seen them. Neato, Kino, awesome. I never have to do that search again because every time something new comes up with Shipple on Blog Pulse, I'm going to get it. Same with Google Blog Search. Over here, that's not an icon. There's the RSS. I'm going to click on the RSS. And I'm going to subscribe to it. You get the picture, I think. So that's what's happening here. So every time I do a search, whether it be on Google Alerts, now from Google directly, let's say you conduct a search on Google directly, there's no RSS feed yet. I don't know if there's one in the works. So in order to get around that, create a Google Alert and subscribe to the feed or click on the feed like I did for that first example and subscribe to it in your feed reader. Because if you do a search on Google, let's do a quick Google search. Let's do a search for Shipple. As you can see, unlike the other search engines that I showed you, there's no RSS feed. So get around that by creating a Google Alert and subscribing to the RSS feed that way. Oops. Let's go to Manage My Alerts. And you see Shipple. So click on that. And this will sort by the news. Let's see. You go to RSS right here and subscribe, just like we did. Okay, that's something totally different. So let's go back to Twitter search. Let's say you don't want to mess with TweetBeeb at all, because you don't even need to. Because with Google Alerts, that's sort of your workaround to creating an RSS search on for Google, but with TweetBeep, if you don't want the email alerts, you can just go around it and you can actually create a search in Twitter search and subscribe to the feed for it. So you don't need that workaround. So you may not even want to mess with TweetBeeb if you want to use a feed reader. So here we'll search for Shipple and Twitter like we did. Over here there's a feed for this query. Click there. Alright, what you're doing now is you're going to grab the feed. 
and it's subscribe. You're going to subscribe to it, and it's going to show up over here. Same with social mention. Let's go back to the beginning with social mention. Make sure we click all. We'll put in shipple. It's going to perform the search, and then it's going to give us the option to grab the RSS feed, which we can then just stick into our Google Feed Reader, and we've got everything there. So any search that you ever perform, you will never have to search it again. It will always update for you right there in your Google Reader. After it stops thinking, of course. and thinking and thinking and thinking. <laughs> Maybe it's mad at me. Maybe it's mad that I showed you all those other search engines first. It's probably like, why not me? I think it's mad. If it takes too long, just restart or refresh. There we go. So we're going to get all of this social media goodness in an RSS feed. We're over here at the right, we're going to click this feed. We're going to grab it. It's going to put it in our Google Reader for us and we're going to subscribe. Now I'm using Mozilla Firefox and I believe that it functions this way because I use Mozilla Firefox. I don't think it does the same thing if you use Internet Explorer, meaning it doesn't take it automatically from, for you. So if I wanted to create, um, let's see, let's go over here to this Children's Museum search. If I wanted to take this and let's say I was using Internet Explorer, what I would do here is I would right click and then I would copy this link location. I would go over to my Google Reader. Where's my most current one? And then I would add a subscription. That's where I would paste that address that I took when I was grabbing that feed address and adding it. And it's loading. It says up here and this is only for Internet Explorer because I don't believe that it works as seamlessly with Google Reader. So right here is my search and it automatically subscribes me right here. So that is a way of making monitoring those conversations much, much, much easier because you can log into a central interface which is your RSS reader and keep up with what's being said about you without having to subscribe to every single alert there is and without having to do a search on every single search engine that is in existence. So that's the end of the webinar. So if you have any questions for me, now is the time to ask. Is there, are there any questions? Okay, well, if there aren't any questions, I um, want to thank everybody for attending the webinar and putting up with the amazing technical difficulties of GoToMeeting and the slow internet. And if you have any questions or need any help making sense of all the stuff that I talked about today, you can email me. My email address is at the bottom of the screen. Um, and that is that. Thanks very much for attending, everybody.